and uh, the uh, bill on objective sex education. But beyond that, virtually every opposition party has been a victim of this abuse. Uh, bills on the prohibition of uh, goods coming from the occupied Palestinian territories, uh, bills on single-use plastics, uh, bills on trade union rights and recognition, uh, bills on um, uh, even things to do with uh, one group we're in today to do with uh, uh, the inshore and islands um, regulations to do with the marine and the inshore. Uh, and you can go on through the list, all of which uh, passed by a majority in the door, but blocked by the government uh, and procedures with this money message. So we uh, are sick of this um, and decided to take action and put a motion to change the standing orders of the doll to end this abuse. Uh, because the abuse, I mean in very, very simple terms, I don't want to get too procedural with people, is the constitution means that the opposition cannot put a bill that raises taxes or directly intends to spend money. Fair enough. I don't really like that. I don't particularly accept it. But that is the rules of the Constitution. But other bills that don't do that, have no intention of doing that, and by any meaningful definition don't do that, uh, the, the goal is supposed to be able to pass laws uh, that don't do any of those things, okay? And all of the, the 50 bills that are victim of this abuse uh, don't do any of those things. But the government tried to claim effectively, I'm, I'm sort of simplifying it, but if somebody had to write something on a piece of paper, there was a cost to it, and that was a charge on the exchequer, therefore it needed a money message, therefore it couldn't pass, uh, or couldn't even proceed through the door, which was a clear and flagrant abuse. We sought to remedy that with a change of standing orders, and then after uh, putting that motion to the door 11 days ago, giving them ample notice of what we were doing, um, on... Uh, Monday night, at 9 in the evening, we were told that uh, they weren't accepting the motion, that the Crown Court wasn't allowing us to put the motion. Not to bait us, not vote on us. Uh, so we felt, no, we obviously disrupted things at the door yesterday, we argued our case, we got no hearing from the Crown Court, and we were forced to go to the courts today. Uh, and in the courts, um, we have won something of a result. Uh, we sought uh, a judicial review of the Crown Court's decision to block our motion uh, and we sought an injunction. The judge wouldn't give us an injunction as he felt it was probably a big step to directly interfere with the dual arrangements, but he did say that we had a very arguable case that there was an abuse of the money message uh, and that this was uh, a reasonable matter to take to the courts. Uh, to review that there was nothing effectively to protect, an protect from an abuse of this money message mechanism. Uh, so we have to consider what we do next, but I think at least we've highlighted uh, this abuse and sabotage of democracy, uh, and we hope uh, to build up more and more momentum to make it impossible really for the government and the Count Corridor to continue to do this. Uh, and there's a lot at stake for a lot of groups, for environmentalists, for trade unionists, for housing activists, uh, for communities, the length and breadth of the country. Uh, these are real bills that make a real difference to people's lives. Uh, and it's just not acceptable. They should be sabotaged in this way. Uh, so that's the, that's the purpose of tonight's protest. Of course, we were hoping this would all be debated in there. It's not being debated uh, because of this undemocratic move. But we're glad nonetheless people came along. Uh, and we hope that the efforts we've made in court and continuing campaigning and pressure on people power will eventually force and that has to be the key i just conclude on that point before i hand over to ruth and a few others people power is really going to be key to break down this democratic sabotage and we need all those whose uh, campaigns and issues are being undermined and subverted by these undemocratic practices in the goal to mobilize to put pressure uh, on all the political parties in the all and on the government to end this abuse so that parliamentary democracy, a very limited thing to start off with, isn't completely hollowed out to mean nothing whatsoever, uh, which is what it seems to currently mean with this abuse. So thanks for everybody for coming along. And I'll, I'll just let a few uh, other TDs who are part of this 
campaign to say a few words to your side with Ruth Carpenter. Thanks for the umbrella, what you need? Um, just to say that, uh, as Richard has already mentioned, some of the bills that are the victims are of this money message abuse by the government are really, really important ones. I mean, the biggest crisis we have in Irish society is the housing crisis. And the government have chosen to stick a money message on the anti-evictions bill that we actually got passed at second stage. Now, we all know ideologically they're extremely opposed to that bill because they don't want to countenance any challenge to the power that landlords have in this country and to change in any way the dynamics of power that landlords have over tenants and to stop the hemorrhage of homelessness that's taken place on a daily basis in constituencies like mine and, and many of the PDs that are here. I think the other ironic thing is today uh, in the doll I raised about gender-based violence, you know, the huge uh, uh, increase in reporting arising as a result of uh, more disclosures being made from Me Too and the phenomenon of women and men who've been sexually abused as well, deciding to
when we were putting this amendment to standing orders, we were putting it saying to ourselves, how on earth can they try and stop this? There is no procedure in the rule book for the Dáil for them to stop us changing the rules of the Dáil. It's in the Constitution, you can change the rules of the Dáil. The Constitution says that each house shall set its own rules in Article 1510. So there was no possible rule that they could use to stop us having the debate today and stop us having a vote which would have been a meaningful vote and would have significantly reduced the ability of the government to use this executive veto to block bill after bill after bill which had been passed by the Dáil. And so then, then they just like pull this out of the hat that the Count Corlin decide that his job is no longer just to implement the rules of the standing orders which have been agreed by the Dáil. Instead he also now thinks that his job is also to interpret and to rule on the Constitution, when very clearly it's not. It, it, it's very clearly stated in standing orders in the Constitution that the Count Corlin's job is to rule on standing orders which are decided by the Dáil, and it's supposed to be the court's job to rule on the Constitution. But they don't even need a big leaf of an excuse of a rule or whatever just to take such an undemocratic act to take our amendment to standing orders off the agenda simply because it would interfere with their more fundamentally undemocratic thing that they're doing, which is blocking all of the very important bills that Ruth and Richard have referred to, anti-evictions bill, objective sex education, the climate emergency bill, the, the bill in relation to the occupied territories, and a whole series uh, of other bills. So it even more reveals you know, the reality of the lack of democracy in this place, the reality that if you challenge the status quo, that the establishment will just organize and invent new rules to stop you doing that. And the only way that can be changed is by mass movement, by mass organization, ultimately replacing this kind of you know, parliamentary democracy where you get to vote every four or five years for people who are going to lie to you, who are going to do the opposite after they're elected, instead with the idea of a genuinely democratic society, which is a socialist society, which are where, where our economy is democratically controlled, where people are elected and recallable and genuinely participate in patriotic uh, democracy. Uh, before that, we have our course victory today, um, which is good. And, and the only last thing I'd say is that there is a way that we don't all have to end up in court having judicial review about these things over the course of the next number of months. There's a very simple alternative. It's a simple alternative that's in the hands of the government, and it's a simple alternative that's in the hands of the Count Corlin. From the point of view of the government, the government just needs to stop abusing the money message. The government needs to now say that the objective sex education bill, that the climate emergency bill, that all these bills will now be progressed, and they promise not to use the money message veto in the same way again in the future. That's what they could do to avoid everyone going to court. The Count Corley could do it by agreeing that an amendment to amend standing orders to bring standing orders in relation to money messages out to the limit of the Constitution will be allowed to drop the ridiculous notion that that is somehow unconstitutional and that he has the right to rule on it and to allow us to change standing orders and to remove ourselves that barrier and that power that has been given by this doll to the government to effectively veto things. So I think the main thing is we have to keep up the pressure. I think it is a step forward. There's more people aware today of this issue and how the government is acting in such an undemocratic way than they were aware yesterday. And we have to keep mobilizing all of our movements who are affected by these bills to say that the money message veto simply has to go. Thanks a lot. Yeah, of course, Cindy. Yeah, and um, it's pretty miserable out here and our motion isn't happening, so we don't want to, like, soak people to death. <laughs> Give them the debate isn't happening. Uh, Tina McVeigh wants to say a quick word, maybe particularly about housing and how uh, this money message is affecting that, and uh, we'll probably finish things up fairly quickly after that to say you're getting completely drowned. Tina. Richard's way of telling me not to talk for too long. Um, come here, I just wanted to say a few words about what happened in the city council last night on our Devonshire Gardens. I'm absolutely like, so angry about the fact that uh, the, the so Social Democrats, the Greens, Labour, 
all teamed up with Fianna Fáil to settle possibly one of the biggest uh, local authority land banks in the city. And as far as I'm concerned, Owen Murphy has put a money message on the building of public housing because when they raised the roof, motion was passed in the Dáil last year. It called for a mass scheme of public home building. And the, the reason that they all said they had to vote for the deal that was on the table last Monday night was because Owen Murphy had said that he wasn't going to fund housing. He wasn't going to fund it. That was the end of that. Now, the fact that they even rolled over and took that is absolutely disgusting. So I think it's really, really important that people know that we still have TDs and, and local representatives who are going to stand by what they say they're going to do, who are going to be in there fighting, excuse the expression, but fighting those bastards tooth and nail to actually get some legislation passed. And it's going to make a positive difference on people. And the people can be sure that there are people in there who won't be sellouts and who won't be turncoats and will always put the interest of the ordinary people of this country at the heart of absolutely everything that they do. So I'm really, really proud to stand here tonight with solidarity and people before profit and rise and all of you knowing that there's people who won't sell out and use public land to line the pockets of developers, who won't sell out on the ordinary people of this country, who fight tooth and nail to bring about the kind of legislation that's going to actually make a positive difference to the lives of people in this country who are hammered absolutely hammered and still hammered by years and years and years of state neglect even before the last austerity years that we saw. And just to say there is absolutely democracy happening in the streets. In the last two years we've seen the biggest housing protests, occupations, direct actions that we've seen in a very, very long time. So those of us who are involved in housing campaigns need to get together and really focus on getting back out onto the ground and fighting tooth and nail so that people think there's still a fight left for people in this city who are willing to defend public housing.